Hello, this is Jared from Yellowwood Guiding, and in this video, we're going to talk about light. Light is probably the single most important aspect of photography, because when you hit that shutter, what you're photographing is not the grouse here, or the grass, or the flowers. What you're actually photographing is the light bouncing off those aspects and giving us an image. So light is an extremely important element in photography. So let's take a like, look at how light really affects our images. So here we have our nice grouse. The light was very soft. When you're looking at wildlife photography or macro photography, anything with a lot of detail that you want to get up close, you want to have soft light. Soft light really means a nice gentle cloud behind the or blocking the sun. If you can see your shadow, and if it's a dark, dark shadow, that's not soft light. We want to see when you're standing out there, your shadow is very soft. It's very gentle. It's exactly what was happening right now. Take a look at what happened just moments after this shot when the cloud left the sun. You've got lots of bad light here. The sun was coming back across this way. The grouse was all in shadow on the back side. We lost all the detail here. We've got really bright here, really dark here. Cameras don't like bright and dark. So we want to try to get the best light possible to get the image to work. So take a look. Here's a perfect example of where it works for one and doesn't work for the other. If you're going to photograph two animals, if you're going to photograph on a sunny day without any clouds, you need to have the light work just right. The sun was coming from this direction behind us. My shadow was pointed out this direction. But here, our bull elk was just turned the wrong way. We had a deep shadow on the far side of the elk here on the left. The sun was coming over here, lit them up perfectly, and this is where I often talk about the hug rule. The hug rule is where you look in the direction of your shadow, which would have been going this way. We then put your arms out like you're about to hug somebody. In between your arms, if you hold your arms out at about 60 degrees from the direction you're looking, in between your arms is the best light of the day, and that's where you can follow the hug rule. Don't point your camera behind or into the light, you're going to get bad detail. But here, we still got to have the animals turn just right to get them lit up. Here's another perfect example of where the light just didn't work out to make the image. When you're shooting foxes, anything with white, they almost have to be in shadow, where you have to have very consistent light to get it to work. Look at the shadow in the eye. It really loses a lot of definition. With a lot of work with the raw image, I was able to bring out the shadow, but I did have to sacrifice a lot of detail and noise in that image. So try to shoot when you have the best light. There's an example of a chipmunk here. The shadow was blocking the, the sun here. It was very dark overall. And then the sun came out. And we can see detail. Now this isn't a perfect image, not even good by far in my opinion, but it does illustrate the difference between a shadow and when the light does come out and hit our subject. So get that good light. Here's a perfect example of good light. Nice soft light. We've got tons of detail. Look throughout the trees. There's no shadows in the trees. There's no shadows in the antlers. Just a little bit. There's a little bit of shadow underneath where the legs were blocking, but there's so much detail in the image and you can see everything smoothly. That's what you want to find. There was a nice cloud, nice soft wispy cloud that was breaking up the sun, offering us this great light when we took this image. If you're going to ever shoot flowing water, you need to shoot on a cloudy day. If the sun is out at all, you're going to get blinkies all over this white water. The other thing, if you're going to shoot flowing water, you generally want to use a slow shutter speed. And the cloudier it is, the slower your shutter speeds are going to be. You'll get that nice flowing water. And we don't want to darken up the image so much to take care of the blinkies that this is all shadow. We want to see the detail. So detail is really important for the light. Here's another example of wildlife on a nice cloudy day. Not a lot of detail. It was a little bit less yellow than I'd like, so it does seem a little bit dull. But the action, there's no shadows in any of the animals here. These two bull elk fighting, we got dust flying, great image. Now here's something interesting to look at when you look at light. White balance is all about the temperature of light, how blue or yellow. So this is a yellow image. The sun was shining. Here is where it's blue, where a cloud came through. Using auto white balance on your camera means you're going to have to shoot generally in raw and fix it later. There's an example where I didn't fix the blue tint because of the cloud. Here we got a fox. If I would have been following the hug rule, I should have been standing way over here shooting across, but I wasn't. I was on the trail. The fox just, I just ran into me. 
and I got really bad shadows on the far side and we don't have any detail. Can't even see the eye at all. But take a look at this fox. The light was a lot softer. There was clouds blocking most of the light. We were standing actually in a grove of trees. They were also shadowing the fox. There's just a little bit of light on the far side. But check out all the detail and the eyes, the intense stare of that fox as it looked across the meadow. Here's a great shot shooting in a snowstorm. The snow's fallen, the bighorn sheep's coming right down the road, and it was perfect because there was no shadow. If there would have been a sunny day, there would have been shadows all over here. Often with horned or antlered animals, their ear will block their eye, will actually shadow the eye, and you'll get that aspect. Look at this ram. Sunny day. Light just stunk. Just really bright here, no detail. Everything else is in shadow. It doesn't work out. It doesn't give you the detail that you want. You can't necessarily use a flash to fill flash an entire sheep. It's just not going to work. Also in a national park, that's not really advised. So you're going to have to wait and get the best images. It involves a lot of times getting lucky. But if the weather's not great, if it's not sunny, it's a great day to go out and look for wildlife. But if the sun's setting, the sun's rising, that's a great time to head out for landscape pictures, especially if there's just a few clouds. Those few clouds catch the light. This is an HDR image, but what really made this image is the fact that the light was shining after the California fires, and as we look here to the west, all that dirt particulate matter in the atmosphere was glowing pink and made for an amazing sunset way up on the trail on Trail Ridge Road. You head out, here's another good example, soft light. No shadows, No, sh actually no shadow anywhere. The cloud was blocking the light, made it perfect. So you want to have fast lenses and high ISO capabilities on your cameras if you're going to shoot wildlife. Here's a great example where I didn't follow the hug rule because I couldn't. This whole meadow was closed, but in a perfect world I should have been standing right about there because this whole other side of the elk is gorgeously lit up, but I was on the wrong side. This is where I could legally be, and we've got shadows everywhere. It really does not add any definition or detail to the image. Here's where sunrise is really important. At sunrise, you're going to have to find a solution as the sun rises here in the mountains it actually comes from the top down and we have to find a way to deal with this difference this is much beyond the camera's dynamic range so if you expose for down here you're gonna get blinkies up here that's gonna be overexposed so you can do two things you can use a graduated neutral density filter and darken the top area here while this stays light or use HDR like I did in this image where you take three to five seven different Im uh, images of the same shot but different exposures then combine them together but look at how the light impacts it gives you that nice warmth up here and then the ice down below the cloud adds a nice touch so to review you want to have the light working for you it's extremely important and you really don't have a lot of control where the animals go but you have a lot of control where you go if the light was coming this way of course the coyotes not working that happens all the time wildlife just does not understand how important light is for photography but if you position yourself correctly point your shadow at your subject follow the hug rule sooner or later you're gonna get situations where that same exact coyote turns just right and we get to light up the whole scene with those nice catch eyes and light no shadows and that really makes the image so use light to your best advantage and that way you're going to get the best shots. Follow the hug rule, get out early and late for landscapes, cloudy days is great for waterfalls, for flowing water, for macros, and for wildlife. So get out there and start taking some pictures when the light is best.